Hey out there, it's Wake Angel 2001 again for another Sonic Boom Vlog. I'm recording this Sunday afternoon because yesterday I had to get to work a little earlier than usual, so I didn't have time to record the vlog after watching the episode the first time. Um, before I talk about Sonic Boom, I just want to take a minute to talk about the Robots in Disguise cartoon, which I also watched. Um, I actually had to record the episode because I was at work at 6 o'clock, but I, I saw the first episode. Um, it made a pretty good first impression for me. I liked it. It has a pretty light tone without being outright comedic. Um, the character designs actually look pretty good. If you're a fan of the um, the cel-shaded Zelda games, like uh, I'd say most closely resembles Skyward Sword since the characters are cel-shaded but still have realistic proportions. Although there are moments of hand-drawn animation in it, like like there was a bird sitting on a tree that sideswiped scared. No, it was um. It was, it was Underbite that scared the bird, but the bird was very nicely hand-animated. Um, yeah, it, 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 looks, it looks good, the storyline's pretty okay, I love the characters. I thought that um, with Strong Arm, we were going to be getting like a grizzled, a grizzled veteran cop thing going on, but she's actually an, an enthusiastic young rookie who's always quoting regulation. That's going to be fun. Um, uh, one weird thing is that the characters' sizes relative to each other keep seeming to change. Like, in one scene, Underbite was like this gigantic looming thing that towered over Sideswipe, despite the fact that he's down on all fours. So it's like, like, you think that he's this huge, gigantic thing. But then, in a later scene, uh, he, they, they show him actually fighting with the other Transformers, and he's only about the size of a large van. He's not really that much bigger than any of them. Um, I'm guessing this, um, either, either they weren't really keeping track of continuity with their scale, or it was a stylistic choice, like, like in the scene where Sideswipe is facing him alone, they wanted to make him appear a larger threat, so they made him look bigger, and then during an actual action sequence, they shrink him down to a practical size so he can actually fight with everybody and not have it look like a bunch of dudes punching the side of a giant shipping container. Um, so yeah, the show's pretty good. Uh, and this premiere was at 6 in the evening, um, but they announced its regular time slot. And would you guess what the time slot is? It's going to be on regularly Saturday mornings at 6.30 a.m. 6.30! They couldn't even put it on at 7.30, so it's at the Sonic Boom. They put it on at freaking 6.30. Like, I don't know what Cartoon Network executives think. Like, like, uh, like someone says, Alright, we got a new show to put on the roster. Alright, so this is great Saturday morning fair. So what's our schedule like? Well... From 9 a.m. to 2 in the afternoon, we give nothing except reruns of shows that we give during the weekdays. Uh, I can't move any of those. All right, so just stick this new cartoon with the with the highly which has been highly hyped for the past year and a half, and with the with the expansive toy line, uh, just stick it on at 6:30 a.m. That should be fine. I, I really don't understand what their logic process is, other than the fact that they genuinely do not want people to watch the show and therefore are putting it in an inaccessible time slot. Of course, we live in the age of DVR and on-demand services, so and so anyone can just watch it there. Hopefully that the, the network can keep track of that and so that they won't have an excuse to cancel the show later on. Um, okay, so now, this isn't a Transformers vlog. This is a Sonic Boom vlog, so let's talk about today's episode. Um, Alright, if I were to give a plot synopsis of this episode, this would probably be another half hour thing like last week's was, and I don't want to repeat that. Um, the, just, let's just say that this episode is just made out of jokes. I mean, there is just a constant string of jokes in this episode. There's, there's sight gags and puns and visual gags and callbacks, and it's just... It's just it's like if you took a bunch of Family Guy cutaway gags, but structured them so that they form a coherent plot. Instead of interrupting the plot, they are the plot. And it's, um, that's pretty much what this episode is. Uh, we get some recurring characters. Um, I guess I should do a basic plot synopsis, although don't expect me to quote all the jokes. Uh, we start with Dr. Eggman attacking the village in a giant moth robot, with Sonic chasing him around with a swatapult. It's basically a giant fly swatter on wheels. Um, and, uh, and Knuckles is running around with a giant light bulb over his head like, Look at me! I'm having an idea! 
Yeah. And then Tails comes in on his plane with Styx riding on one of the wings. At first I thought, why is Styx riding on the wing of the plane when there's a perfectly good seat right behind Tails? Then I remembered that the seat's built like this. I'm like, oh yeah, there's no one who would ever want to sit on that. <laughs> um, so so they, they fly by in the plane, and, um, and Styx is trying to guide Knuckles to evade the moth robot, but uh, when he runs into the wall, she says that he's under, he's under moth mind control, and they have no choice but to destroy him. Ah, uh, Styx. Always willing to make the big sacrifices for the greater good. Uh, so t instead of killing their best friend, uh, Tails decides to drop the mothballs. It, it, it's a moth robot. Why is it so easily distracted by light bulbs and vulnerable to mothballs? <laughs> um, so yeah, the mothballs hit the robot, and that stuns it long enough for Sonic to hit it with the fly swatter, which causes it to flip upside down, and, not, and Dr. Eggman loses, but he claims that he was injured in the fight, and Sonic's victory is tainted, and he has, and he has Cubot and Norbot carry him away. Alright, so this leads on to the main plot, which is, the next day, uh, Dr. Eggman serves him with a court summons, and the rest of this episode takes place as a courtroom drama. Or, I shouldn't say courtroom drama, I should say a courtroom farce. Because <laughs> this is... This is the part of the episode where they just start telling jokes and jokes and jokes. Although we do get recurring characters, Soar the Eagle, the motivational speaker, is a reporter. Uh, T.W. Barker is uh, the prosecuting attorney. And we even get a return of Burnbot, who is the judge. And he's given a wig and a gavel, and he can talk and everything. Um, so yeah, Knuckles is the defense attorney, and... Um, you know, they, they do so many gags in this. There's like a scene where Dr. Eggman tries to establish himself as a good character by showing a clip of him playing with, with Cubot and Norbot. And then, and then Cubot walks up and says, Now that we've finished breaking this evidence, should I return this costume to the, to the costume store? That is grounder levels of stupid there. But it served to, their stupidity served to make the joke funnier. Which is how you're supposed to use stupidity. Yeah. You're not supposed to use it as a lazy plot device. You're supposed to use it to enhance your jokes. Um. <laughs> oh, this is just, like, just jokes and jokes. Um, you know, it's a funny thing. I just got the most recent issue of the Sonic Boom comic book a couple days ago, and the whole theme of that issue of the comic was that Dr. Eggman was trying to endear himself to the citizenry by, by pretending to be a nice person, but none of them would buy it because he's been evil for such a long time. Here, um, Dr. Eggman appears to be credible as the victim. Like, he has this gigantic neck brace and everything, and, and like, the jury and the citizenry actually seem to convince themselves that Dr. Eggman's telling the truth the whole time. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know, it's like we got, a, we got big old opposites here. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, now, not having to do a, com a complicated retelling of all the jokes, um, so basically everybody presents evidence and cases and stuff, and, um, and we get, we get the point where, uh, Knuckles says that he's just a, a down-home country attorney who, uh, doesn't, who doesn't know how to, who doesn't even know how to put on mittens. <laughs> get it? It's funny because in the... Because in the main canon, Knuckles wears those mittens, while this Knuckles just has his hands wrapped up in sports tape. Because he's too dumb to put on mittens. Ha ha ha! How many times have I said that I don't like it when they, that they turn Knuckles into an idiot? Yeah, but now, now, that, now that Boom Knuckles can take on the role of idiot, I'm hoping that in the proper Sonic the Hedgehog games, they can t go back to making Knuckles, like... You know, the way he used to be. Uh, you know, slightly naive, yes, but, you know, more, but, uh, more obsessed with his, uh, he, he's a treasure hunter. He's, um, he's a guardian. He's, you know, he's, um, you know, he, he's things. He, he likes to box. He actually is a boxer. Not just, not just some big old smash everything brawler, you know? That's why he has those big boxing gloves. 
I digress. I'm not talking about Knuckles. I'm talking about this episode. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, farce, farce, farce. Oh yeah, remember how I always said the justice system on in the Sonic Boom universe is completely messed up because Dr. Eggman is always getting away with his terrorist acts with total impunity and we almost never see any kind of uh, formulated military or police force? Well, here's the first time we actually see a courtroom case and it is a complete and utter joke. So, okay, Sonic Boom's universe really does have no kind of legitimate law enforcement whatsoever. It's just a complete and utter joke. Um, which is perfectly acceptable. D this is a comedy show. I mean, we've seen on Adventure Time, we've seen court cases, we've seen how silly they can be. Um, anyway, so... Uh, the court goes along to the deliberations. Um, we, we have a cutaway to that uh, comedy chimpanzee that's like their David Letterman thing, and he ha he does a little Benny Hill thing where he's getting chased around by a fat guy in a Sonic costume, which I think is supposed to be an homage to, um, um, like, Sanic, you know, like the, like, like when people do a poorly drawn Sonic the Hedgehog ripoff and they stick it as, like, to be some kind of internet meme or something, I think that's what they're getting at. Um, uh, but yeah, like, the, the... Um, they get to the point where the, the jury has to go deliberate. Uh, the actually beaver is on there. Um, no, I don't care what his name is. Uh, it was actually in the comic book he's named, but I really don't care. Don't bother telling me his name. I'll, I'll look it up, okay? I'll read the comic book again. Just don't tell me his freaking name. He's the actually beaver to me. Um, so yeah, when they, when they go to deliberate, everybody else has, um, has a hippie theme party, you know, with the... With like lights and Inagata de Bida and everyone's dancing, like you know, my mom's my mom had to go to jury duty a couple of months ago, and she said while she was on jury duty while they were deliberating, she was wondering what the people in the courtroom were doing. <laughs> if it actually was them just doing the 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 disco party, I like to think that that's what we do in courts when when the jury is deliberating, disco dance party. Okay. <laughs> um, so they come out, and they're reluctant to actually give the ruling, so n without even bothering to wait for the ruling, the, the Burnbot's a, Burnbot declares that, that Sonic is guilty, and is about to bang his gavel, when Deus Ex, Machinima, Deus Ex Machina comes into the front door, and Amy making her first appearance. It turns out that she's been, um, that she's been, uh, take, that she's been at the, um, it turns out that she's been in a beekeeping seminar for a week. That's why she hadn't made an appearance in the episode. How many hobbies does Amy have now? Like, like she's a painter. She, she's a, she's a counselor. Now she keeps bees. Um, it's like all the character traits they took out of Knuckles, they stuffed a bunch of extra ones into Amy to balance out the universe. Um... And, uh, I guess she just has a lot of free time since she's not stalking Sonic like a psycho anymore. <sighs> so she comes in, she pounds the floor with her hammer so hard it shakes everything up. Dr. Eggman's, um, T.W. Barker falls over and when Dr. Eggman looks to check, Sonic points out that Dr. Eggman's neck is fine, he's not injured. So Eggman just calls up his, his robots to come in and attack the place. And all, all the people run out the door. Here's a funny thing. They run out the same door the robots are coming in. That's like, that's like if there's a fire, people are running towards the door where the flames are coming through. Um, I'm so, but anyway, it serves to get the civilians out of the way so that everyone else can just go ahead and smash the robots up. Um... And then uh, Dr. Eggman makes the escape, and he turns around, Sonic chases him out. I'll give you something to sue me over! <laughs> and um, and then we end on a joke with that comedy chimp saying it's uh, the New Year's rockin' Banana Eve, and they just kind of lower a banana, a giant banana on two ropes, and then his, and he says, well, that was rather anticlimactic. hey yo! And that's how the episode ends. This is a really weird episode. I mean... There's not really much in the way of substance. We, we get a couple of cool fights. We get to see some wacky inventions. Uh, we get to see recurring characters. But this episode is just joke after joke after joke after joke. I mean, uh, Sonic Boom is primarily a comedy show. 
and this delivers. It's a funny episode. Um, I, I, I've been, I, like most guys my age, I'm sure, um, I, I watch quite a lot of Law and & Order and CSI, so I know how courtroom drama shows go, but, uh, the courtroom comedy, um, yeah, it, this works. I mean, this isn't like the kangaroo court, right, like, where, like, people start acting completely and utterly out of character and, like, um, you know, like, sometimes when, when I see a, uh, these shows do a, a courtroom thing, uh, they, they really annoy me. Uh, this, because, you know, because the characters act so out of character, but this is just, this is just, it's funny. It, I mean, the court is and is presented as a farce. It's something that everybody is pretty much aware of, and, um, and, and, and it, you know, it's played up as that. We're like, yeah. Okay, we're we're gonna have a farce trial. Let's do a farce trial. We're not gonna take this trial seriously at all. We're just gonna laugh it up, and you know that's how you do it. That's good. Uh, so yeah, this was funny. I like this episode. Um, it's pretty inconsequential. Like I don't really think there's gonna be any great greater continuity tie to this thing, but you know we don't need that. As long as we can deliver some genuine humor, we're okay. Alright, so this has been the Sonic Boom Vlog with my quick opinions on how stupid Cartoon Network is for sticking the Transformers cartoon at 6.30 a.m. instead of opening up their regular time slots for something other than Clarence and Teen Titans Go reruns. And I will see you guys next week.